The nozzle and the whole system together produce a force. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to VD Engineering. My name is Vin. This video will explain how an afterburner works and why they are used in jet engines. If you guys are interested in aviation and space and if you've seen airplanes like the Concorde, the F-15, the F-16, the F-22 Raptor, you notice that when they take off, they can take off very quickly and achieve very high speeds in a very short time period. This occurs because of an afterburner and this video will explain the engineering behind an afterburner and how it actually works to speed up the engine very fast. So if you're a student in engineering or if you're even a professional who's interested in airplanes and how they work scientifically, this video will explain that in detail. So let's get started. So before we actually look into afterburners, we must first explain how a jet engine works. So let's look at a jet engine. You have your fans, your fuel intake and everything. A jet engine is simply a cycle. So a cycle in engineering is called thermodynamic cycle. It is simply heat and work added into a system. So if you break up the jet engine, we can break it up into many sections and each section performs a specific task to produce work on the system. First you have your intake where the air is tucked into the engine. Then you have a diffuser in which the air is expanded to slow it down. And then you have a compressor. So the compressor in an engine basically puts the air to a higher pressure in order to maximize combustion and to maximize fuel efficiency. The next stage is your combustor. So this is where fuel is added into an engine, either from you know things like atomization, where you simply have a spray nozzle and it adds in fuel and the hot air comes in and it burns up and then it goes in a turbine. The turbine simply expands the air and speeds up the flow and then you have a nozzle. The nozzle and the whole system together produce a force that produces a force on the airplane to push it forward. This is how a jet engine actually works and you have engines like the turbofan, the turboprop and the turbojet which are different types of engines with different efficiencies. So an afterburner is used in a jet engine as I mentioned before and it is used in mostly turbojet and turbofan engines. A turbofan is very similar to a turbojet, but a turbofan has a lot more efficiency because it produces a lot more velocity of the air. An afterburner on its own, it's simply fuel addition after your turbine stage, before the nozzle. So it's an extra addition of fuel. It's a very fuel inefficient method because you're adding fuel again, right, in a jet engine. And you already have your stage where the engine receives fuel and adds it into the combustor. But afterburners, since they inject more fuel, they produce a massive increase in force. And it occurs after the combustion and the expansion state, so before the nozzle. When a fighter pilot turns on the afterburner, the fuel is injected into the hot air, which burns and produces more force because of the increase in temperature. And you can see it on a TS diagram, which is a very commonly used diagram in thermodynamics or by someone who is a mechanical or a chemical engineer. So this whole combustion process and an afterburner is actually not efficient, as I mentioned before, because of many reasons. First, the air is going very quickly. If you notice before, in the compressor stage, the air actually slows down, right? But when you have a turbine, the air speeds up and you have expansion. So then when you add more fuel to quick moving air, it's not very efficient. And to fix this, if you look at a military aircraft engine versus a commercial aircraft engine, you will notice that a military aircraft engine is very long, right? You notice that it's more slender and longer. This is because of mostly drag reduction as well. But the main reason is because to promote efficient combustion of the afterburner, you must have a longer path for the fuel to be added into. This will then increase the exhaust temperature. And that is why you see the nozzle expand in area. So this type of nozzle with an afterburner is called a propelling nozzle and it's used on many military aircraft. And this is done because your force from your engine, your propulsive force is a function of your mass flow rate which is your density times your velocity times your area. And this I have explained this in more detail in my rocket engine video. So you guys must be thinking now, right? To increase your force, why don't you just build a bigger engine? Like what's the big deal of using this whole afterburning process? So the problem with building a bigger engine is that since your force is a function of area, you would need to build a massive engine and this will increase your drag on the airplane because you want the fighter jets to be very slender so they can fly quickly and also maneuver as well. And the intake of an engine can only take in a fixed amount of air at a certain pressure. 
to understand this in more detail, it's actually beyond the scope of this video, but I do recommend you read some books on compressible flow and jet engines to understand why the jet engine intake size actually matters a lot in design. Also, fighter aircraft, all they actually care about is the maneuverability and speed because they want to achieve a mission, right? They don't actually care about saving too much of fuel unless the mission demands it. The whole point of military jet design is to maximize speed and minimize drag. So when using afterburners, there are a few practices. The first thing is that you must not use them during cruise unless you want to speed up towards a, a friend, you know, a, a wingman or something. The idea is that you're during cruise, you're flying very high in the air and the air density is very low outside. So your engine will not produce as much force anyway. They are used to take off on short runways. So if you look at an aircraft carrier, you know, they just propel it very quickly, right? The afterburner helps here because they can speed up very fast. And the next thing is that they can be used to gain altitude in a short time period. So if you look at a dogfight, for example, you know, Top Gun or something, the afterburners are used to, you know, take off very quickly and to achieve high altitude. If the plane is being shot down by a missile, you can actually dodge the missile by using afterburners in the right time. So, you know, like that's more dogfight kind of stuff. It's not my thing because I'm not a pilot, but you know, they do have their applications and they do provide a lot of benefits to military engine design. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions, please leave it below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.